Hi there, it's Julie and it's a beautiful sunny day and I thought today would be a good day to talk about my Hawaii community experience. So during this experience, I ended up losing tens of thousands of dollars in Doug Graham's Hawaii community and I will tell you how that happened. All right, so the community was initially uh, advertised online in a lot of the raw groups and it was backed by Doug Graham. So Doug Graham basically put his name on it, uh, which made me feel like it was a little bit more legit because I really liked Doug Graham. I read all his books. I thought he was, you know, inspirational and stuff. So I really bought into that. The basic premise was that it was a large property with 500 fruiting trees and the idea was a permaculture property where we were going to grow our own stuff. Uh, you would get your own hut. So uh, basically you would own a hut on the property and you would own it for 99 years. So for this amazing price that they were charging, uh, you get a property for 99 years of your life. So when I initially visited, uh, just to tour around, it looked nice. There were definitely lots of fruiting trees and a nice big garden. And there were already people there living there with their families. Um, I'm going to call the person who actually started the community, Dick Gibbons. <laughs> and Dick and his family lived on the property in the largest house kind of near um, the central area where we would all congregate and make our food and stuff. So there was a shared kitchen and a shared fridge, I think maybe two shared fridges. And then there was an area in the back where you we kept all the uh, just picked fruit. And there was an area for laundry, a little table tennis area, a nice sink, and then right next to the shared kitchen was the garden. So you could walk in from the garden with your food. There was a fire ant problem. Now, I believe I knew about this when going into it. So I knew that the fire ant problem was an issue and that it was something that we would have to deal with. But other than that, I didn't really see any other issues. So. Getting into the property when I actually moved there, I found out a little bit more information. So Dick Gibbons is a businessman and in the past he had some kind of shady deals. So he um, started a golf magazine uh, which didn't take off and he had already charged all these people for subscriptions and when it didn't take off, instead of um, refunding them, he just kind of ended it. Sorry, you'll hear my son beside me, he's eating popcorn. <laughs> so when we got there, Dick and his family were spending a lot of money and um, we had already paid the money and he was just, yeah, spending the money with his family, which I don't know, I didn't really make too much of, I guess. You know, they have a big family. They had like eight kids together between you know, um, different marriages and stuff. So they had a big family, they needed to spend money and they were spending it. They were, you know, upgrading their house. They had very nice like wooden furniture in their house and um, yeah, they were just buying a ton of stuff. My understanding at the time was that Doug Graham put his name on it, but he did not obviously start it. It was Dick who started it and in return, he would get a share in the community. Now, I'm not sure if there were other parts to the deal, like maybe uh, money, I don't know. But he claims, and Dick also claims, that the deal was a share in the property. So eventually, living there for a while, I find out there are issues with the 99 year lease on the property. So the, there was a part of the property that was owned by the community and then a huge chunk of the land was actually on a 99 year lease. And that's why when you bought a share into the, the yeah. company, essentially you'd get a share um, for 99 years. That's the whole 99 thing. The issue was around um, the owner who was leasing it. I think he wanted to actually sell it and we didn't have the money to buy it. So there was a potential for losing that. And that would have been a lot of the 
fruiting trees that were on that part of the property. Luckily, the hut that I had chosen was on the owned part of the property and there weren't that many huts on the owned part of the property. So I was lucky there, but the trees we would have lost. Now I'm going to talk about another person on the property. There were a few other people who bought in. I think there were about seven of us, seven families, maybe six who bought in. And um, I'm going to call her Thorn. <laughs> So Thorne did not like to do work on the property and Dick had called her out on several occasions at different meetings. We used to have kind of community meetings and he had called her out several times, not directly, but had stated that some people on the property were not putting in their fair share of work. And that was true. There were some people and that if you had a share in the property, at least one person from your household should be putting in their a minimum amount of work. So now Thorne had gotten a job with Doug Graham. She was doing some kind of online work for him. I'm not quite sure what. She had sold all of her stuff from back home. She was not from the US. And so she had a good chunk of money, but she needed, I guess, a, a job while she was there. She wanted to make money as well. So she was also working for Doug Graham. For several occasions too, when she would have to leave and she would kind of weasel her way into getting someone to take care of her dog. She had two dogs there. And one of those times she somehow convinced me, I didn't want to do this, but she convinced me to stay in her hut and take care of her dog. She was very convincing, I guess. So at this point, I believe I had gone home for just to visit my family and stuff. And at that point, I was thinking, I don't want to be part of this anymore. There was a lot of drama going on. And I believe this was the point where I started wanting to sell my share or get rid of my share, get out of it, get my money back. I had spoken to Dick about this. He basically told me that I had to sell my share. So I posted a bunch of things online, you know, looking for a community to live in and, um, and he had kind of said that that's how I'm going to have to do it. So I can't really remember the details, whether I was gone and then came back or I was still gone, but there was a point when Thorn started to email all of the community members and um, basically talk trash about Dick to everyone. With me specifically, she was telling me, oh, you wanna sell your share? Well, he's not gonna help you sell your share. He wants, he doesn't care, he wants you to stay, so he's not gonna help you. And she started convincing me that he was going to work against me in this selling of my share. Basically, she got us all to kind of go against Dick. And she actually ended up getting a lawyer involved and um, he, the lawyer told us that if we all took a vote, that we want Dick out of the community, that he would have to leave. And we did take this vote and the majority did say, yes, we wanted Dick to leave. And I'm going to admit here, I voted yes, okay? She had convinced me that he was a horrible person, especially, you know, with all the stuff I knew about his past business, you know, sketchiness. I believed her. And in retrospect now, I kind of regret that. And Dick, if you are watching this, I am sorry. So now I'm gone again. I think I might've come back and left in between. I'm gone again. I had a really bad staph infection. I had to go home to heal because I was trying to heal it naturally and it wasn't healing there. And when I came home, it actually did heal because of the climate difference. So Thorne starts proposing all these things, because now she's kind of in charge, I guess, like there's no one in charge anymore. So she starts proposing that there's gonna be charges for the people who are no longer staying in the community full time because they need extra help. And meanwhile, she's using my hut for woofers. So she's getting woofers for free and she's using my hut for woofers. And at this point, I believe, I know for sure I'm pregnant at this point. I don't know if I was pregnant the first time I wanted to leave, but now I'm pregnant and I for sure want out. 
and there's no responses to my ad. Well, that's not true. I had some responses to my ad that I had previously put out and they were needing to come to visit the property and I'm not at the property. So I needed to get Thorn to help me show the property. And I'm not sure how that was going, but my impression was that she was kind of sabotaging um, that because everyone was basically saying, no, I don't want in. And I think she was telling them about all the bad stuff. So I'm at a loss. I don't know what to do. And I just want my money back and I don't ever want to go back again. So I end up hiring a lawyer who had to spend all this money looking into the property, getting, you know, looking into the, the deal I had signed. And then um, he eventually sent them a letter saying that, please pay me out or I don't know, I'll have to take further legal percussion. So they end up actually paying me out. And apparently I got one of the best payouts of the whole group. Now the other people in the property, eventually over the years, they all wanted out too. I'm not sure what went on. I was out of the drama, but they all basically ended up getting paid out and less than what I got. And what I got was not the full amount. And after the lawyer fees, it was pretty much a third of what I had paid. So everyone's gone. And now there's two families left. There's Thorn and her dogs. And there's another family. They're like an elderly couple and they have kids as well. And basically they're living on this huge Hawaii property after having paid us all, you know, not very much for it. And they basically own, own the whole thing. And I have a feeling that Thorn is very much in charge of this whole deal. The other family are kind of at her mercy. So I don't really envy them at all, but they did benefit from all of us. Now, Doug Graham, let's get to that part. So during this whole thing, Doug Graham is very silent. He doesn't really say anything and he doesn't really take much responsibility for any of it. At one point, I actually called Doug Graham out and Doug Graham's response was basically, um, well, I've had a lot of hard hardship in my life and you know, poor me. I don't know, it was a weird response and he basically just, took no responsibility for what happened to everyone. He had put his name on this and he was obviously benefiting from it and took no responsibility. So that is my story about my community in Hawaii experience, how I basically got scammed of a lot of money when I was younger. This money was meant to pay off my schooling and it didn't obviously. So yeah. So has anyone else experienced anything like this or have any cool stories? Let me know in the comments, give it a like, and I'll see you in another video.